Director of Artificial Intelligence in Manufacturing Industries. I'm DJ Clark, I'm talking to you from Hong Kong, but our guests, our panelists and our keynote speakers today are spread out all over Asia. I'm going to give them an introduction in full when it comes to their turn to speaking, but let me quickly say who we have. We're going to start with three keynote addresses, first from um, Doc, uh, sorry, first from Dr. Neil O'Connor, um, who is Professor and Head of Department of Accounting at Monash University in Malaysia, and then we're going to move over to Dr. Mashahiro uh, Naka Nakamura, sorry about my pronunciation there, CEO of Lexar Research. And then finally to Dr. Wang Yu, the research fellow at the College of In uh, Intelligence and Computing in Tianjin University. And I should point out here that Tianjin Municipal People's Government Information Office is the co-sponsor of this event today. Yes, I want to kick yes. this off as soon as possible. So let's get going with Dr. Neil O'Connor, uh, Professor and Head of Department uh, Accounting at uh, Monash University. Let me give you a little, little bit more. Neil has spent uh, over 20 years in Hong Kong where he researched uh, the modernization pro process of Chinese firms, examining issues such as performance measurements, uh, order qualification and trust. Now, as I said, on the website, there's um, a lot longer bios for everyone here uh, if you want to go on and check who our key speakers are. So um, I'm going to hand it over to you, um, Dr. O'Connor, um, to start us off. Excellent. Thank you, DJ. And I just want to reach out to the audience because what's happening with the announcement and the government initiatives in China, which is really, really beneficial for the long-term development and you go on industry 4.0 with the made in china 2025 but now we're talking about ai and today's topic ai and manufacturing how does that apply to the average manufacturer in china in asia today and these are some of the issues i want to address today because often we think about a lot of the government initiatives but what actually drives innovation in the long term is also a mix of collaboration and owner mindset and also vc capital has spent uh, a, a lot of money on startups innovations over the last decade especially in this region and so i want to talk about the challenges for ai for the ordinary manufacturer and giving you real examples of that i'm going to skip over what is ai i assume that we all have a good idea of what ai is and how it applies to the automation pyramid for the factory and for a lot of factories in asia they don't always have these multiple layers of ERP systems and manufacturing execution systems and SCADA and PLC and sensors at the production process level, it, it, a lot of them are much more basic than that. So how do you actually go to the next level? And next level, my m meaning the following, how do we go from a documented process to continuous improvement to digitization? And that's what I want to talk about because many factories that I talk to and visit as part of auditing factories are at the stage of documented process or continuous improvement levels and have not reached the digitization. And after that, you know, the opportunity to actually use AI or exploit AI to solve various problems in the manufacturing. The big challenge I see in my visits of factories in the region and visited hundreds of them is the owner mindset. Many owners don't have a strategic vision for making the factory world-class, for making a world-class product. It's gone from product to product and very much not necessarily focused on developing the ta talent and the skills in the organization. And this owner mindset is a big thing that we're going to talk about later on the panel. What I want to show you is some areas where I've seen factories where documented processes can be digitalized and other areas where actual processes can be used to actually feed into an AI algorithm. What I want to take you through is about six examples and to give you full understanding of a comparison, these two factories are basically making the same product. And you'll see that the one on the top 
has actually advanced further in terms of continuous improvement towards the digitalization end. The factory at the bottom, even though you're seeing computer-aided design on the PC here, the actual process is much more at the documentation process and they have much more room for continuous improvement to undertake. And as you can see, the assembly lines are totally different, but they're basically making the same product, although the product, the that the factory is making on the top is definitely sold for four times, five times more than the product in the bottom. And so I give advice to these factories to think about how can they document more at the documentation stage, they are documenting where they have quality problems, but to get to the continuous improvement and digitalization, we want to start to digitalize this type of information in the factory. Now just take and, let's have a look at another product and let's uh, just pick on one product. And I'm just gonna turn down the volume here because the machines are quite loud when you go into factories. But here are two factories making exactly the same product, Hoover boards. And the one at the bottom is basically more of a workshop where every operator there is going through the 90 steps to make that Hoover board themselves. Whereas at the top, we've got this Henry Ford type idea where, okay, let's just have a process where every operator just does two steps. And so if there's any sickness in an operator, you can replace that operator overnight and keep the factory throughput going. And so these are ideas of how you can continuously improve on a physical sense. But of course, then once you go to the one at the top, you can go to the next stage and start to digitalize different phases in the assembly line. And then often, you know, the digitization leads to data collection and opportunity to use AI. Let's have a look at where AI is definitely a, uh, can help in factories. And this is definitely on the materials inspection. And so we have exactly the same battery being received by two factories. And the one on the bottom is a battery pack and they're just accepting it as it is, no testing. Whereas the one on the top is actually receiving the individual cells, 20 of them that go into the 4.4 amp hour battery pack that goes in the Hoover board. And this, here we have the machine and uh, collecting data as it's actually testing the individual cells that are coming into the factory. So this is the starting point of a digitalization process that we're seeing in the factory at the top. All right, so what else can we learn about where AI can be useful? Well, it's possible that we want to collect data on the quality gates. And what we see in factories, this is making car audio, a lot of the documentation are paper-based like this. And so the next stage, we want to get that factory to move to digitalize every instance of these quality control problems. Uh, why do you want to do that? Because you want data over time so you see common problems that are occurring so you can actually invest more time and effort to fix certain parts of the assembly line. Here, we're trying to fix the screwing in area of this assembly line. And then later on, we go around to another part where we've got the soldering area, where two parts where we've identified quality problems. And this is common in a lot of factories where they find problems, but they don't follow up to see how they can make the process better or even making the ergonomics of the operator better so there's less variation in how they're aligning their hands and putting the assembly together. It doesn't have to be a robot that AI is applied to. You can apply AI and digitalization to manual assembly lines if you're collecting the data. And so here we have the operator here where the soldering base of the IC PCB board is actually moving as he's soldering, creates lots of variability, creates lots of problems. And these are the things that I talk to factory managers about. Attention to detail so we can actually spend more time to document other aspects of the detail in the factory, especially keeping things clean. Like if we how could you digitize or even use AI if you're going to have an open window and allow dust to go into the room? It's not, a, it's not just enough to just think about collecting data, but you still need to move to a continuous improvement stage like we have in the factory above. And here we have a clean room inside a clean room, uh, ma manufacturing of smartphones, kind of much higher end technology. And yes, there are no robots there. It's still manual, but there's, Manual robot, it doesn't matter when we want to apply AI 
to help in a factory to improve its operations. Ah, now we have an operator at the bottom, you know, using the smartphone while they're operating. So there are obvious areas where factories are in the documentation or continuous improvement stage that can be fixed even before we digitalize. And I'm not here to run down factories because I actually go into the factories and give pro bono advice to help them improve their operations. And I've been doing that for several years now. Here we have the burn-in room. This is another opportunity to collect data and to digitalize the data for possible AI use. Here we have it's manually collected, but you can automate this burn-in process. And this is probably a very critical quality gate that we want to see in factories because this is the last point of testing before the actual product actually goes out and is shipped to the customer. Ah, and so we can digitalize this process as well. All right, so you know what have I learned by visiting the average factory, I don't say normal you know, workshops and SME factories in China, in the Southeast Asia, in the region, is that materials received in QC is often neglected. And that's at one point where you can actually collect data and digitize that data area. The burn-in room is, of, is another point where we can collect data and digitize it. And also the rejects or quality gate area at various parts of the assembly line. So, you know, as a takeaway for owners out there of factories, because we want to speak and actually help to educate factories out there, is that we want to try and improve the transparency of your operations in the customer's eyes, because if we've got border closures or even no border closures, it's a priority in customers' minds to have more transparency over the factory that they are buying the product from. Ah, and so an example of how you can actually digitize even when you have a labor intensive process is something like what Pivot 88 does. I don't work for them, I'm not promoting them, but this is a good example of this third party provider that provides tablets that go into the assembly line already built for you to actually, for factory owners to actually input data of exactly like the assembly lines I've just showed you in the videos. Another example of steps that factory owners can take is to get a factory audit to actually find out where are you in terms of maybe international standards or maybe in terms of standards in your province is fine. I've analyzed through my own data analytics over 500 factory audits working with a third party provider. And we find that there's a whole distribution of outcomes of factory audits leading from 30 out of 100 to over 90 out of 100 across a whole range of provinces. So factories aren't there yet in terms of a factory audit. Why does a factory audit matter? Well, what I've found is I've matched factory audits with product audits in over 300 combinations and found that having a good factory audit outcome is significantly leads or significantly predicts a better product audit outcome. And a product audit outcome as a pass is exactly the outcome you want as a factory because that means a happy customer in many cases. Ah, so just summarizing, there are obviously benefits of industry 4.0 and AI industries, but it's industry specific. The automotive industry is actually leading the field in this area with the major auto manufacturers around the world and in China adopting industry 4.0 and AI already. And they are able to do that because it's large volume and automotive systems. And so you're collecting lots and lots of data, which makes it amenable to AI algorithms ah, and machine learning and deep learning and so forth. There are obviously obvious opportunities being grabbed by industry players, and that is predictive maintenance, defect detection, yield output, inventory parts optimization. But for Asian manufacturers, and I, I say manufacturers in this region, focus on continuous improvement and trying to digitalize different areas where you are collecting data. Just like in the assembly line I showed you, collecting the quality data, the quality gates, digitize that. We're not there yet, but these are things that we can start to digitalize. Future steps, start by measuring more. Learn from third parties like Pivot88, like factory third party auditors. Get a factory auditor to come into your factory. You pay 400, 500 US dollars for one day. They do a full order of the factory and give you ideas for areas you can improve. 
and finally learn from OEMs in the developed countries. Some of the factories that I've visited that seem to have better systems in place were told me that their major customer was a major brand name manufacturer from Japan, from Korea, from the USA and from Europe. Obviously, they have actually learnt from these OEMs, otherwise the OEM wouldn't have contracted with the factory. So that's all I want to say. I want to start off with a practical note. AI is very important. It is the future, but we've got to actually close the gap from where I see a lot of factories today at the documentation and the continuous improvement stage. We need a lot more effort to move to the next stage of digitalizing so we can start to capitalize on the opportunities that AI brings us. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on with the keynote uh, speakers in order to get through. Before we start the questions, as I said before, if you have a question for any of our speakers today, please drop a note into the, the Zoom chat and we will try and pick it up later on. 